I wanted to work with sound and multimedia, um, so I partnered up with this guy Benno, who was interested in work in the concept of background noise that is now put into all technology that we use to make us feel like the technology is authentic. So that was our focus, which is the, our human relationship to authenticity in technology and machinery. So we built a performance involving communication um, by Skype and, and then some kind of fantasy uses of multimedia, of sound and visuals, to make a little story about this. So we had a little jar with some dead birds and a kind of fake veterinary autopsy report. Mm -hmm. and we made these kind of objects for each day and they were just small little beautiful things. My strategy was to let them develop projects but then constantly throw in other ways to see things so they didn't just stick on the idea of making a movie. Basically that was my one thing was to say okay doing video for theater is not like making a movie. You have to think of the live element. You have to think of how it gets made. You have to think about how the audience sees it. You have to think that it's, a, a, that it's somehow produced and, and has that feeling of being produced. And I think in various ways all the projects hit that, either because they mixed live and pre-recorded stuff. Everything was installed in a certain way and not just projected on a screen. Chris Condon presented me his work at the beginning of this workshop. I think it's interesting because he's focused on uh, to uh, create a kind of the, the magic that comes from technology, but revealing how it's made. And I think it's interesting for the audience especially. The more you can um, see and uh, I don't know mm, from other people and other cultures the more you are enriched by this experience especially in opera which uh, I learned thanks to Anna that is um, um, is lived very differently from country to country. They can slide the length of these tables and we did everything I think most everything with them um, still just put, putting still photos under the camera. So now you're going to see a photo play and um, I, in a sense it's copying, uh, it's a bad copy of, do you know? You don't have to learn how to do it, right? It's um, because in the end they probably won't be the ones doing it. They have to learn how to think about it. And maybe one job I could do is is, is get them to like, you know, go past their first simple ideas that they have. So already start one level deeper. And um, especially since the, the first ideas people usually have are just kind of illustrating something with video as opposed to allowing the video to do some work that causes something to happen. They just want to show something. <laughs> you can play those bits and you can narrate it at the same time uh. and do a kind of, at the end, if you don't make a show, you can do kind of lecture demonstration and it would, it would be great. You just say, well, you know, the story starts out with this guy Faust and he's on this horse. Music, 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 music. Okay, thank you. The, when the students tried to figure out how to solve uh, this one passage in, in, the prod, in, in Faust that involves a horse ride to hell. And how did they solve that? And so the question is, you can't, it's hard to do on stage, but with video, they found a technique to, to make that happen. Then there was another project by two young dramaturgs, and they wanted to work just with the color white. And they sort of developed, they sort of dissolved many different layers of white things into it, each other. And at the same time, there were sort of texts about vanishing, disappearing, and a little bit from Susan Sontag mixed in, so there was a kind of more conceptual piece. We must learn more to see, more to hear, 
und mehr zu fühlen. Letztes, letztes Mal habe ich ein Projekt gemacht. One student was a Korean girl and she made a very funny thing where she had a, a background on a television and then a figure of uh, an, an image of herself on a projector and projected that onto the television. So she basically with a with a beamer projected her own image into a TV. But it was all done in a kind of low budget charming way, a low tech charming way, which was very sweet. And then there was a project of that was a kind of animation of a breakfast table shot from above and that was projected on top of the breakfast table itself. So you had bowls and glasses and a bag of muesli and orange juice and that was then shot and projected on top of that and that made a very weird kind of um, surreal combination. I, I, I don't know, again, I don't know if you can teach somebody, I don't know if you can te really teach somebody to make a beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. But you can teach them for sure, or you can give them tools to think about the video. It's much easier to think about what a video should be if you've seen 10 different examples of people trying to do the same thing. Then you could say, ah, this kind of works and this kind of doesn't work. <laughs> I think uh, that's, uh, um, that's it for our showing today. Thanks for coming. Chris Kondek is yeah. lovely, great. He was very open. So he came to the workshop saying, I don't know um, exactly what you guys want or what we can do. But he was very attentive to our ideas. He said, you know, tell me what you're interested in. And he let things flow and we found like I, like I found the partnership that was right and we and you know he was a great facilitator of coming between the projects and just pushing the areas the gray areas of knowledge that we didn't have um, and yeah that was a really well done job by the workshop facilitator.